Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be painting some flowers and I'm going to be showing you some tips for composition when you're creating watercolors. Now I have a few different brushes here, water, paint. I use the Windsor & Newton Professional Watercolors from the tube. I've put them in this palette. I have my fresh water, some paper towels, and you're gonna want at least a brush. I use the Princeton Heritage round brush, the number three for most of my paintings. And I also really love this Princeton Heritage Blooms brush. It's from a collaboration of Jenna Rainey, the watercolor artist, and Princeton and Heritage. It's a size 12. There are other sizes too. This has more rounded, bigger bristles and a very long stem, but it's nice because you can really hold it back more and get a little looser feel. We are going to be painting a little, little fun composition. I have my paper. It is the Fabriano brand Aquarell. Um, 140 pound, seven by 10 inch watercolor paper. I really like this brand and it is actually very affordable. So without further ado, let's get started. We are going to start with just this normal round brush because I know that most, most of you probably have this one in here. So I think my main tips first to start with is an S shape. The reason behind this S shape is it's actually going to allow movement in your painting. It's going to help the eye kind of go to different areas, which is great. And it really helps tie that composition together. So if you think of the letter S, it kind of starts here and ends here. So we're going to actually start up here and slowly work our way down. And let's just do some really loose really loose flowers. So I want you to get your brush really wet and dip it in some blue. We dip it in blue and we're just going to hold our brush at this angle here, about a 45 degree angle. And we're gonna gently press and lift and then do that on the other side. You're gonna form petals that way. This is one of the ways that you can form your petals. And you're gonna kind of go around and you wanna keep that angle and always be pointing your brush here to the center of your flower because it's going to make it look more realistic and it's going to look, make the flower look more natural. Something that people can often, and you can turn your page if you need to as well, but a lot of times people sometimes are trying to make petals, but they're overlapping in the center or they're going different directions. And then your flower looks really funky and we don't want that. So just keep angling the brush. You have to change the direction of that you're holding a little bit, but your angle really stays the same where it's, it's like you're laying it flat, but propped up a little bit. Um, and sometimes putting your hand here helps and your fingers under, you can hold it that way as well and just kind of have fun. Sometimes I will rinse it and add like another color and just let that bleed. And then we're just going to kind of make some little baby ones. I'm just gonna tap, tap my brush a little bit. See how that, it's like going the wrong way. You can also, you can also fix it by kind of adding a bit more petal on the one side and fanning it out. So let's just do like some really simple little flowers here. We're going to stick with blues today. We might throw in some complimentary colors, but for now we're just going to Stick with some blues. Now this, you can also make little dabs of petals if it's like ones you won't be seeing from that angle. And I'm gonna throw some more of this color up here. I 
This brush is so great because of the tip and you can really get into those small areas and then go into larger ones like the end of this petal. So now let's kind of cascade our way down here. So we're gonna go out and put another bigger flower here, but let's go with like a rose. So roses are like, you go in like the rule of thirds. So using like three petals, try to leave some white space and as you go, kind of push it down and let your brush fan out a little and then lift. And you want to kind of keep going like one, two, three. And sometimes you have to go add to some of your gloves, but it's going to really give you this nice rose that is opening up. Now, we would do it a little bit different if it's a rose that hasn't quite bloomed yet, um, but I go with that first. And what really helps when you're doing your composition too is you want to be leaving white around your border. That can help. You can add tape there. I don't want to add tape because I don't want to cut off my flowers, um, but it can really help you when you're starting out to kind of give you that border so you're not just going all the way to the edge of the page and it really just ties everything in. We're going to go to this other lighter, more oceany blue, and I'm just going to add some little petals. These are some very fun, loose flowers. And Maybe add some to your more aquamarine blue. Some people have like two cups of water. I, I always use the same one. If you are very particular, you can always use a different one. And now we're gonna mix some blue. So if you have some space on your palette, let's mix a little bit and get another fun color. So you can already see where this is like tying together. We're gonna just maybe make some flowers that are budding here. Maybe go the other direction. I turn my page a bit because if not, this will be covered in water. Remember to utilize the white space. You can have some petals going together but it really helps break it up when you have that white with the flower. Um, I'm going to add some stems now. And for that, I actually use these beam paints, which are amazing. They actually grab the pigment. <laughs> they make them themselves and they get the pigment from the mountains. I got these as a gift and I, I love them so much. Um, so here you're gonna see, I'm connecting my stem there. We're gonna make this stem go this way so it starts like going in that S shape. And then when you do your leaves, it's a lot like a petal. You can either just press down once, like so, or you can do twice where I showed it there, and kind of just add those in. Okay, I'm now going to add some more flowers going to just make some light strokes. It helps when you just do a little lift there with your hand. And if you need reference photos to kind of get the anatomy of a flower, that's always helpful. And once this dries, we can go back in too. And that's always really fun to go back in and really layer it. Let's see, I'm gonna do a little bit of lighter green and I'm just going to put it right here onto my palette. Maybe mix it with some Payne's Gray. That will help darken it and make it a little bit more evergreen, but not quite with that light green mixed in. Okay. 
So we already got the first part of the S kind of going. We're now going to focus in this area and we're going to add, let's do like three, three bigger flowers here. Sort of like that first one there. So just really fan that out, press it down, creating some really cool petals. These remind me of the ocean with that really deep blue. And over here, maybe that one's a little hidden. So we're just gonna and put a little fleck, some petals you can't really, can't really see. So we've got that one. We're gonna put another one here. Let's grab a little bit more of that purpley blue to add a little bit more color. And sometimes if you don't know, what colors to put together. I would use either, you can grab your color wheel and the colors that are across from each other always work well together. Um, so like blue and yellow, got oranges and pinks, um, colors of that sort. But if you don't know what colors to put together, you have a hard time deciding or something, you can also um, just stick with one color and do various shades of it. And that will always work because the one color is always going to, it's different versions of that color. It is also going to help your eyes really dance around because you're seeing different tones of it. It's got these two here. I really like how those are looking. Going to add another one. And the more paint you're adding, the more kind of buttery consistency, the bolder your colors are gonna look. And then as you lift it a little bit, it almost, it lightens it as if you were to just like add water. So that's always fun. Make sure you get that last petal, you really get that little, little angle in. Go fix that one over here. So a lot of the times you might be doing the petal in the wrong direction, but the fun thing is you can always fix it with watercolor. You can also blot this paper towel to remove some color. Um, there are so many different things that you can do that are so workable and it's just so freeing and so free flowing. So we got that going on. We're gonna add some more here to kind of complete that S shape. Now it doesn't have to be an exact S. You could draw an S, it's gonna look like the letter S, but you want it to just kind of curve in that way. So I really feel like adding some green, just like some leaves down here. So we're just gonna try it out. Let's see how it looks. That green is a little weird that I picked up, but hey, I don't like it, so I'm going to blot it. Another tip, and that almost erases it completely if you get it when it's still wet. And I'm going to just add a new green over it. You can also wait for this to dry a little bit, but I'm gonna just go in there with this green and it's like that other one didn't even happen. So when you fix your mistakes quickly with watercolor, let's maybe add a leaf over here too. You can always like, also leaves you can go like that with your brush. And that is always fun. I'm gonna fix this one because I don't like the tip. So I'm gonna go in like that. Maybe add a leaf up here, throw in a little bit of different color green, maybe just do some little dots too. Make it a little, there we go. Okay, now we're going to go for like, I think another rose down here and we'll do, that watercolor is so pretty right now. Okay, so we're going to go with a bigger rose and we're just gonna go one, two, three, our little rule of third, one, two, three, and as you go, you can see you're kind of fitting the curves in um, in between, or like if that petal is there, you're gonna go over, and you can even make it look a little more organic. It doesn't have to be a total, totally straight or like 
curve that is one straight line. It's going to make it look a lot more organic when you don't do that. So you want this to have a weird circle and you're going to want to make sure like that line's going past this one. So it's like they're hugging each other, these petals. That is fun. That is fun. I'm going to add another leaf going this way because that one leaf by itself looks a little strange. Okay. I'm going to mix over here. That's the great thing about like mixing, whether it's on the end of your palette or wherever you are, because sometimes you don't like the way the color looks. And so you want to kind of like check it out again before before you start putting it on your paper. So we're gonna just go out like that. And then sometimes I go back in the opposite way. Um, and here I kinda wanna just make a little line there. Can make some lines there in the center. And so we have that, that movement. We might just add a little bit more here, but I think we really have that like S curve going on. And it might need like a little bit more down here as well going to add some fun leaves, kind of dancing. See how it makes it really look like it's dancing? I think that's so, so cool. Just from a shape, your composition really, really does matter. Um, let's go with a little blue one and we're just gonna make a tiny rose up here. So this I'm going a little quicker, but you can go back to the part where I share with you a little bit more on the rose if you need a reminder there's also so many fun fun ways to do roses you know how i learned to do this i actually always drew roses other tip roses will always drawing will always help improve your watercolor so i would just keep going in circles with a pen and that's how i learned how to make roses. And then I tried to mimic that in watercolor and then brushed up on some things, looked at a few different techniques from other artists because that's a wonderful way to learn too. And here we'll add a little bit of green and then we went with that. So there you have it. You have your S curve. It is really something that is so helpful and beneficial when you are making your paintings. And then look at that. Look at how it dances on the paper. So fun. I hope these tips were helpful for you. And I will talk to you in the next video. Welcome to the new year. And let's paint some more next time. See you later. Bye.